What's up guys? Um, today is Travel Tuesday and welcome to the present road for a minute see over here. Um, you probably know us by now. We hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> so today is part two of our Travel Around the World video series. Um, we're basically going to be talking about how did we plan this trip around the world. In part one, we talked about how we saved for this trip. So if you want to watch that one, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, but on this video, we're going to talk about how we planned it, which is probably our second most asked question. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Planning a trip around the world, uh, I guess, can feel really daunting. For us, we just took the idea from the around the world trip ticket, which if you don't know about that, uh, we have a video and a post about that also linked below. Uh, but basically on that ticket, they don't let you backtrack. And so we thought, well, that's probably a good way to do it. So we just thought, let's just head west. Um, but South America is south of us. So we were like, uh, okay, maybe we'll go south first and then west. <laughs> and that was it. Really not much rhyme or reason. Sorry <laughs> to disappoint. Oh, we had a bucket list. I mean, it was a quite a long bucket list. And so we picked some few items in that bucket list and we wanted to make sure that um, we were there on a good season. Yeah. Yeah, so. Like India, we did not want to go to India when it was hot. I mean, mm -hmm. it's always hot in some places, but we just wanted to be there when it was a little less hot. Like in Patagonia, we don't want to be there in a dead winter. Yeah, it's that's a lot of snow down there. And no services are open too, so right. these are really key. More of a wish list item, that, but we were pretty good at being able to hit this, and it was to try and go to some of these destinations in the shoulder season, mm -hmm. so that one, it's more affordable, and two, it's also less crowded. So we failed in Europe because we were there like smack in the middle of the summer. But uh, a lot of other places, we were there in the off season, like Vietnam, north of Vietnam in the off season is amazing. If you remember from uh, series one, we talked about how we hoarded points to help pay for the trip. Um, so the other thing that we did was use those points to plan travel. But to really maximize the use of those points, you have to plan certain things a little bit more in advance than we did other things. So for example, our trip from LA to Australia was on miles and that we had to book very far in advance because um, it, it's just hard to find seats, the seats that we wanted. To give you an idea of what we were working around, I'll give you a quick run through of what our route looked like. So we started in the west coast of the United States and we flew down to Peru. In Peru, we had a tour booked for Machu Picchu with some friends. It was a really great way to start. Then we made our way down to Argentina and Chile in this part here is Patagonia. And we wanted to be there in December because it's the shoulder season, so it's less busy. And also the weather is supposed to be good. We got really lucky and the weather was excellent. We made our way back up through Central America quick stop in LA and we flew to Australia. Now this leg here was important because we booked it with miles and in order to secure the tickets that we wanted, we had to book this in advance. So we had to be in LA to catch that flight. We toured around Australia, made our way to New Zealand and from New Zealand, we flew to Hong Kong and then to Southeast Asia. This flight from New Zealand to Hong Kong was also something that we had to secure in advance, not as far advanced as Australia, but still we had to work around that flight. Then we had family that was coming to meet us in Japan for our East Asia part of our tour. And we were going to meet with a few friends in Hong Kong at the end of November. The next big item was India. We did not want to be in India when it was super, super hot. And we also wanted to hike in Nepal, which is right up here during the shoulder season, also because it's not as busy. Nepal can get really, really busy. In Nepal, we got a little snowed in, so it wasn't as ideal as Patagonia, but it was still pretty good. The next one in terms of weather was Egypt. Egypt can get super hot in the summer, and we didn't want to be there when it was boiling hot. It was still pretty warm when we were there, but not that bad. Same with the Jordan and Israel areas. The last one that we worked around or we tried to hit, but actually we missed, was a hike that we wanted to do in the Italian Alps, in the Dolomites. The refugios that are the lodges over there were already mostly booked. And thankfully for us, they were because it rained 
pretty much every day that we were there that we would have been hiking. So we got really lucky on that one. But again, because it was a shoulder season that we were targeting, you could get not such good weather. So those are all the really critical things that we worked around. So while we were on the road, we met a lot of travelers that was also doing the same thing as us, and then we got a lot of tips from them how to get around. Um, so many times we would just get to a destination and then we would change things because some good tips that we get from people at the hostels or the hotels that we stayed, it was a good way to actually um, get some tips out there. <laughs> yeah, so we try to stay flexible enough yeah. when we were in the country um, to be able to accommodate these travelers' tips because they really add to the experience of your travel right. so much. I think what worries most people about not planning a trip and being so loose like we were is, well, what if I can't find a bus ticket or a train ticket or I want to fly and then it's really expensive? Um, this flexibility also comes with a little bit of risk. And yes, absolutely. So we definitely got burned in Colombia and not robbed or anything, but we found out two last minute that it is much, much better to fly in Colombia. It yeah. is such a hilly country. It's beautiful, but really hilly. So a one hour flight will take you 12 hours on a bus. And that is a very long 12 hours. Yeah. So yes, in Colombia, we took more buses than we would have wanted. And the local flights are very affordable if we had just planned Colombia a little bit more in advance and a little less loose. We learned that from Myanmar. And in Myanmar, we flew, and it was exactly the same thing. The bus was 12 hours, and the flight was 45 minutes. And when you see that, you know that it's a very long bus ride. <laughs> so you, you definitely learn um, while you're traveling, like how far in advance you should be planning some things. So I think that's it for this part two of our video. Uh, so basically, what you do is just pick the heading, which direction you want to go. <laughs> visit all the places on your bucket list, try to be in good weather, use your points, talk to the locals. For part three, we're gonna talk more about... Would we go on another world trip? Which is our third most asked question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you haven't. We post travel-related videos every Tuesday. We'll see you next time.